Right. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming so early. And please welcome Yuri Holusha with his talk about Infinite Span 8. Okay. So, good morning. So, good morning. Thank you for coming here, coming to the presentation about Infinite Span 8. My name is Yuri Holusha, and I work in uh, JBoss Data Grid Quality Engineering Team. Red Hat JBoss Data Grid is a supported version of Infinite Span, which I will be talking today. So uh, I would like to go th through this presentation with so many examples as I could possibly do. So I prepared a live demo for you. I also know that not anybody, not everybody knows Infinite Span. So I will go through a short introduction what Infinite Span really is and how you can use it. How could it? How could you benefit from it? So let's get started. Uh, so what is InfiniSpan? InfiniSpan is distributed in-memory key value store, data store. So what does it mean? So it's distributed, so it's replicated or distributed all over the cluster when you install it. It's in-memory, it's usually used as a cache. I will be talking about caches all the time because the basic implementation of uh, the API is implementation, it, the implementation is named cache. So um, it's usually used as a cache, I'm pretty confident to say that you all know what a cache is. So it's exactly like a hard drive cache when you want to accelerate, accelerate the operations. And so it's a distributed data store. Data store. It's a, really a, when, you, when you want to distribute the data all across the cluster, InfiniSpan does it for you. It, uh, it doesn't expect from you anything more than, um, than a configuration. We'll see an example in a minute. Uh, InfiniSpan comes uh, with basic APIs, like very simple map-like map API. It's actually implementation of concurrent map. And so it's very easy to use. Uh, what it means, you will, you will use a basic operation like get, put, put if absent, size, key set, all the operations you know from map, Java map API. It also has some other APIs and the new functional map API, which I will introduce today, which is new in InfiniSpan 8. I forgot to say that InfiniSpan is a NoSQL data, no data store, and what it means. When I say SQL databases, uh, you will probably figure of some uh, relational database. Like, so you, you got databases, tables, rows, columns, records, and so on. Everybody knows it. No SQL database is uh, different in that way that it doesn't have the fixed schema, so no tables. When I want to put something in the map, I will put the whole entry, and I, when I want to retrieve it, I will get the entry as it is. So I can put, let's say, some person entity or product entity, whatever, and I can retrieve it back, just like with basic Java map. So, uh, so this is a somehow description of no SQL data stores, databases. They don't have a fixed schema, they have a flexible schema. InfiniSpan can operate in two modes, library and client server mode. The library mode, what does it mean? It means when you have your application, your var file, jar file, or whatever, uh, you put InfiniSpan, the li InfiniSpan library in it, in, the, in your application. So when you have your jar file, let's say, when I open it, I see the InfiniSpan jar, the InfiniSpan library uh, in it. In contrast, the client-server mode, as you probably know what the client-server is, so the application is completely independent of the, of the data store. So the application is running on one server and the data store, the InfiniSpan server, is running on other node, server, whatever. So it communicates remotely. That's the difference between library and client-server mode. As I, as I said, the basic um, unit of operations is, is cache, and it can operate in uh, three basic modes. There are actually four, but the three of them are the basic ones. The local one, local mode, is uh, when you have the infinite span cache on one single node, one, one single node. So it's basically a map with extra features, like transactions, eviction, expiration, querying, and so on. So it's like a super map. But the real, real value of InfiniSpan is uh, when you use it in clustering environment. So what it does, let's say in replicated mode, 
when you put an entry, you have several nodes all across the cluster, and you put one entry somewhere, and InfinSpan will distribute the entry all across the cluster. So all the nodes will have all the values. This is very great. This is, this is great for, uh, for failover handling, because all the nodes has all the data out of the box. You don't have to do anything besides configuration. InfinSpan will distribute the data for you. So whenever any node will go down, you will, still, you will still be able to continue the work, So, which is pretty neat. I think this is, the, this is the right time to show you just a very basic example of InfiniSpan for those who are not familiar with it. So I prepared a, I prepared a demo. Uh, so this is entering, uh, so what it does, it's entering or listing uh, products through the cache API, so I'm listing it, uh, it's basically uh, create and uh, retrieve operation. So how does it look in, in, uh, in code? So as I said, cache is basically an implementation of concurrent map. So you're, you should be really familiar with this code. I retrieve the cache from some kind of cache manager, doesn't, you don't have to know why, and I create the entry and put it via key and value. That's it, so it's really easy, everybody understands it. When I try to, I was talking about clustering, about replication of the data. So, uh, if you if you if if you notice, I'm uh, I'm on a server on a, I'm on a server on port nine zero eight zero. Here I have another one uh, with port offset one hundred. So I will try to uh, sorry, I will try to add new product. Let's say. new product with, I don't really care what. So I enter it, the product was successfully added, and now I will try to retrieve it from the other server. I didn't do anything, anything special. You saw the map, you saw the, saw the put operation. When I go to list products, I see the, I see the product there. So InfiniSpan did this for me out of the box. So this is quite a nice feature. That's basically the basic use case of InfiniSpan. Uh, so where did I configure it? Sure. Big pardon? Q. Q. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah uh, yes, it it uh, it can be. Pardon? Yeah, sorry. So uh, if the uh, infinite span can be used for uh, asynchronous putting or uh, Q. Is a shared queue. Yeah, but uh, it, uh, there are some I'm not sure that I currently understand your question, so maybe I could under, uh, I can answer it uh, in the end. Would it be okay? Because I don't know how the time will go, so. Is it okay? Yeah, but definitely I want to answer it later, okay? So when I look at the configuration of the cache manager, uh, I'll see the other stuff is not really important, but the really important stuff would be that I'm enabling cluster mode. And this says replicate everything on all the nodes in the cluster. So this is it. Besides this really basic, uh, I just have to kill one of the servers, sorry. And um, besides this really basic, uh, pardon? Yeah? You mentioned replicating on all of the servers. Uh, does this happen on a form mode, or does it, everything has to be replicated on the same server? When you put a knife in the case, mm -hmm. it has to replicate all over the servers, and then you have to wait until this is done? No, no, this is uh, done lazily. So when I try to retrieve the entry from the other node, it will retrieve it uh, then, so you don't have to wait. Okay. Also, there is a distributed mode when, which is a um, replicated mode is just a s really specific use case of distributed mode when the number of owners equals to the num number of nodes. So the, all the data is replicated to all the nodes in distributed mode. You can retrieve, you can replicate the one entry to artificial number of nodes or subset, let's say. 
Okay, so um, back to the presentation. Uh, so this, is, this was the basic, uh, uh, very basic uh, usage of InfiniSpan and what other features it can possibly handle, like expiration, eviction, I will maybe introduce it later, transaction, failover handling, that one node goes down, so InfiniSpan will automatically replicate the data somehow, you will not lose the data, MapReduce, and so, ma so much more. But this presentation should be about new, new features in InfiniSpan 8, so what's new in InfiniSpan 8? It's based on Java 8, so it leverages as much as possible the uh, new APIs uh, in Java 8, like Stream API in particular. So I will introduce the new APIs, querying enhancement, new web-based web admin console, and some other minor stuff. Okay, so let's get started with the new APIs. Functional map API. This is a, it's not a, it's not a replacement for the basic cache API I was showing you like a few moments ago. It's a supplementary API. It provides you a new, uh, new way how to put, how to put or operate with the cache. And it also um, gives us new, new features. And I will show it by example. So let's, uh, let's see. I have the live demo again using the functional, functional API. API, I killed my server, of course, yeah. So using the functional API, and I will also put another product, doesn't really matter what. So it does the same thing as I, as I showed you before. So how does it look in the code? Uh, when I, so this is, uh, no. So this is what it, what it really looks like. The functional map API, it needs um, some kind of entry point, I create a functional map implementation from the cache, from the advanced cache, and then I retrieve the, one of the implementations for operations over the, over the cache, like write-only map, read-only map, read-write map. And then I can execute some operations via the evil method or evil many or evil your all, I think. And I can use I can use uh, a lambda, lambda to operate over the, over the entry. So what's the difference between the classic, a, classic API and this one? This one is completely asynchronous. So it rip, uh, it, all the uh, operations retrieve a completable future. So it's not, not blocking operation. I will go, the code flows like this, it will, oper it will execute the eval and goes down and is blocked only by the future get. But I can call it later. This is just an example. So this is completely asynchronous API. And uh, so what I do, I just put an entry here. So you might argue, why do I do this? Because it looks you know, more complicated. It's still simple, but it's complicated, more complicated than can push, uh, ca um, cache put. And so, why do I do it? I get the same result, right? Why the hell did we did we did we do this? And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show it to you because there's a one pretty nice use case where uh, you can benefit from it. Suppose you have a following following scenario, then you want to you have a cache of entries like a product, so big complex entry values, and you want to retrieve only one property from it, let's say names. So I want to do something like this. I want to show only the product names. In the basic, uh, basic API, the, uh, the answer is pretty obvious. I get all the, all the I basically get, oh, I just, uh, I'm just a really big fan of Java 8 stream API, so I, uh, I use it as much as possible. So in the basic, how would you do it with the map? You retrieve all the entries, and then you just select the names. This is what it really does. So I really have to retrieve all the entries, all the values, whole values. But let's see how it goes with the, with the functional map API. So when I go uh, get all the names, I'll move it a bit. So I create the entry point, the functional map, read-only map. This is some kind of entry point. And then I can execute a lambda on the keys. And here, here is the big difference. The, the lambda gets serial, serialized, and it's 
transport it to the node where the data lives. Then it is executed there, and the, and the result is uh, transported back to me. So with the basic cache API, the whole product entity is going to the, uh, via the network. But in here, only the strings go through the network. So this is a, so suppose you have a very big entity, very lar large entity, this can be a huge performance boost because you retrieve all, only the information you really need. So this is the use case where functional map will, you can do it only with functional, functional map API, not with the classic one, okay? So this is kind of like very nice feature and it's motivation for, for you to use it when you need to decrease the payload. Let's go a bit further. Another nice new API is Distributed Streams API. So if you're familiar with Java 8, you probably noticed the Java Stream API, and this is the distributed implementation of it. So you will operate basically as you did with normal Stream API, and uh, in Finispan, we'll distribute it, distribute the will distribute the work for you. So it's in parallel, it's topology aware, meaning that the, that the jobs are targeted on the nodes where the data lives. And uh, yeah, and that's it, it's, it's, uh, it's parallel. So you're getting parallel execution out of the box, right from nothing, you know, you, you don't have to configure anything. So let's see an example. Uh, let's say I want to compute some statistics, like average prey, Average price, uh, total number of pieces. You know, some sum. Immediately, you will think of something like uh, sum average, and this is just a grouping example. That uh, I want to know how many how many products have number of pieces one. Okay, so it's it's really a basic example. So let's see how I computed it using distributed streams. As you see, it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. I retrieve the value stream just like I would, nor I would do using normal map, and then I do some Java 8 stream, uh, Java 8 stream API like magic. If you're not familiar with it, it might look strange, but what it really does, it's only an averaging the, the prices, it's summing the pieces, and it's grouping by the, by the pieces. So it's really it's just a syntactic sugar. But uh, the thing is that I called a cache values stream and I get an implementation, distributed implementation of, of, uh, of the streams. So it's really nice, I, don't, I didn't have to do anything. And it's parallel, it, might, it can be much faster. Let's go through another enhancements in InfiniSpan 8, which might be querying. As I said before, the InfiniSpan is a key value store. What does it mean? It, uh, so you have a value and you have a key. When you don't know the key, you cannot retrieve the value. That's a basic definition of a key value store. So, but sometimes you don't know the key, right? So it might be useful for, uh, for you to somehow query the data, and InfiniSpan has this ability for a long time. But the new features in uh, the, uh, the new version all also contains an aggregation, like min, max, sum, whatever, uh, grouping, classic group by thing in SQL, and continuous queries, which is a bit more important, important so I will show it later. Uh, again, just a basic example of the aggregations, and uh, so I want to I want to compute the same statistics as I did with distributed streams, and I want to show you how it works in, how it looks in Finispan. So, I basically create some cache factory, then create a query, and you see that I'm using the aggregations, average, and sum. I think this is really readable. And, uh, and retrieve the values, and here I will use the group by. I think this is pretty straightforward, and it's just for you uh, to, to see how it, how it really looks like. Uh, so the new, uh, new feature is that it wasn't implemented in previous version on InfiniSpan, these two, these two features, aggregations and grouping. If you think about it, it may seem to you that kind of this is obvious, so how could it not be there before? But uh, 
still think about it that this is a no SQLite data store. It's not uh, the values can be more complicated. It's a complex, complex value. So this is not so obvious to implement like in a relational databases. And it's really nice to have it. Yeah, it's really useful, of course, to have a group by clause. I was talking something about, oh, I still jumping in there. I was talking about continuous query, yeah, sorry. Like in the same, uh, in the same time. I, I, I think, I think you, uh, you get, uh, you get the result. If so, you're saying. Uh, repeat the question, okay? So, so uh, what was the question? Uh, what happens if I do a query during update of the cache, basically, or putting a new entry, or is it? Uh, I think this kind of, it, it might be, might be. Uh, Pretty tricky, but uh, I I would bet that it, it would retrieve uh, the query as the as the um, change didn't happen before. Like the query would be executed uh, without the new without the new uh, value. Okay, but this is kind of like really deep implementation details. So, but I can definitely verify for you from documentation. So, but I would bet 90 percent. Okay, 87. Does the, so, so the question is whether the query API supports nested, nested querying, and uh, you can always this this, um, this uh, what I what I showed you is a InfiniSpan special query API. It's uh, just a fast faceting over layer, but you can always use uh, Lucene, the pure native Lucene queries. So it can do everything that Lucene does. So yes, okay. And so the new feature uh, is called continuous queries. What it is, so you create a query and store it somewhere and attach to a, to a cache and a listener. And whenever a new entry is entered or removed uh, in the cache and matches the results of the query, you will get notified. So I will, yeah, I think I described it pretty well. So, <laughs> so I will show you an example again. So here I have a continue, continuous queries. Let's say this is some kind of system notification. You know, like you have an, on GitHub that uh, you haven't read the notifications yet. So here are a list of notifications that I didn't uh, read before. So I will mark the notification as read and insert a new uh, what was the, okay, and insert a new product. Oh, we don't want any exceptions, so, oh, no, price. Okay, and I will add the product and look at the continuous queries, and there it is. So how did I implement it? Implemented it. When we look at the code, so I'm saying, I'm constructing, I'm constructing the query. The, this query is very simple that uh, retrieves all the, all the products. I create a listener. I will show you the implementation in there. Say, I will say that I want to create a continuous query for the cache and attach a listener to the query. That's it. I think this is also pretty straightforward. So whenever, um, so whenever a new, or so whenever a new, a new entry is in the results, is joining the results, or leaving the results of the query, I will get notified to the listener. And how's the, how, how does the listener look like? It's a, it's a very simple Im implementation of continuous query listener, and you have to overwrite two methods, result joining, result leaving, with obvious meaning. So when it joins the result, it will provide me key and value. When it leaves the result, it will provide me the key. And I can react to that um, event. Yeah, yes, uh, yes. You, you, you will, you will, uh, this, this one will be triggered. If you update the, yes. Uh, 
Yes. Yes, exactly. Okay, so these were the the features of no, okay. And uh, I also want to show you a new so this was kind of like uh, APIs and programmatic news in Infinite Span 8 and we also came up, not we, Infinite Span developers, not me, uh, came up with the new management console. So suppose you have a cluster of Infinite Span nodes and you want to uh, manage it somehow, you know, like create caches on runtime, see the statistics of the cache. So I will show you, uh, so it's a, I will show you a demo because it's, the demo is a thousand words worth, so I don't really, I, I will just de demonstrate it because it's just a management console, not just, but it's a management console for the infinite span cluster. So, so here's what it looks like. I log into it, I have two servers uh, running. Uh, it looks ugly in, in, this, um, in this resolution, but I cannot do anything about it. So here I see a list of cache containers. Uh, I can see a list of caches. I can also search, of course, between them, like I want to, only, I want to see only transactional caches, or I want to see uh, statistics of the cache. It looks much, much nicer in the normal resolution. But uh, I can see a statistics of the cache, how many read hits, misses, and so on. I can see also the properties and many other stuff. I can configure the cache. And I can also see information about the servers I'm running in the cluster, in the domain mode. So here I see, here I, see I have two running servers, one stopped. I can enable it and so on. So this is kind of like quick through demo. But it's a really nice, really nice feature and this management console is evolving every day, like really in the hard, uh, hard development press. I would like to mention a few more uh, core enhancements. Uh, in eviction enhancement, I will try to really go through it sh sh fast. So what the eviction is that you you can basically do a bounded cache that you can say in this entry will be only 100 entries, okay? So and whenever you will put 101st entry, one of them will be evicted, removed from the cache. So you have a bounded cache. This feature was also in Infinite Span from the beginning, but the new thing that is implemented is memory-sized uh, eviction that you can say this cache can only have 100 megabytes of data. This is done via the, an estimation and it works under certain circumstances, certain circumstances, circumstances, and, um, but it can be, it can be, uh, it's not a blocker, really. And one more very nice, uh, very nice core enhancement is also an expiration cluster events. So an exp expiration is an ability to, s to say to the entry, you will live, you give a lifespan to, to the entry. So you will say, this entry will last only for four minutes. This event, uh, this uh, feature was also in Infinite Span for a long time, I think from the beginning, but uh, right now it's implemented so you can get a cluster-wide notification. So whenever an entry is evict uh, expirated, you will get notification very similar to uh, the continuous queries, like this entry and this value was expirated. It could be very useful too. One last, uh, one last slide would be about the new integrations uh, of InfiniSpan with uh, Hadoop and Apache Spark. Um, what the integrations are about that you can run Hadoop or, or Spark uh, jobs uh, over the Infinite Span cluster. So the Infinite Span will serve as a data source for the data, for the uh, data source for the data, data source for the job for the Spark. I think, uh, I don't know really much about it, but uh, there is uh, another guy who knows everything about it. This is Vojta Juranek sitting right here. And uh, he has a presentation, I think, at 12 uh, o'clock. So if you want to know more about the, this, this particular Apache Spark and uh, InfiniSpan integration, or in general, you should definitely see this, this presentation. And this is, uh, this is it from my side, and I think I'm ready to answer all your questions. Hopefully, I will be able to. 
So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, you mentioned the client supports the distributed mode. C client server, client server uh -huh. mode, okay. Yep. Uh, does it mean that the client sends uh, all the data to all the nodes? No, no, no. Um, uh, I think um, the client server mode is basically that, um, so either you have a library mode where the infinite span is bundled with the application or you have a, cli a client server, which means that the server is a standalone server. Can I, um, imagine a J JBoss AS server? Or, so, so it's a standalone infinite span server that that is as a data store, and it clusters to the cell, I, and I can connect to them via remotely via client. Okay, so, uh, no, I didn't. Ex let me let me get it this way. Well, maybe I doesn't hurt the or uh, or uh, well, <laughs> you mentioned that the server have two modes, distributed and clustered. Oh, replicated and distributed, right. Okay. Yeah, replicated okay. and distributed. Okay. And when you have a distributed mode, okay. the client from your application sends the data to all nodes, or what's the difference between these modes? Between these nodes, uh, yeah. So distributed mode is you have a nodes of, of infinite, you have a cluster of infinite span nodes, and every entry is replicated. There are, there are as many copies of single entry as you specify. So I say that the number of owners in distributed mode would be two. So even if I have cluster of five nodes, every entry will be in the cluster twice. Okay, so whenever, so I, I can assure that whenever one node goes down, I will be always, I will not lose any data because I have two copies, okay? So this is distributed mode. And replicated mode is just a special case of distributed mode when the number of owners is equal to number of nodes. Okay, so all the data is replicated on all the, all the servers. Thanks. Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, can you tell us maybe some good examples where this is already used, so used in production? Uh, why is it this uh, cache better than memcache or uh, other kind of caches? Okay, I'm, I'm just thinking if I can... In production. Yeah. Uh, so, thanks for this question. Uh, we have a number of users, but uh, I don't think I can, I cannot name it. And uh, I can name it, but... Uh, so, uh, there, are, there are several differences be like why is infinite span? Why, why would we? Why would you use infinite span? So first of all, it's performance. Uh, we. I, I'm not sure if I if I can say it because uh, I don't know if it, it has been published. But I think yes. Uh, it uh, comparison to memcached or uh, the performance is pretty pretty nice. But it can also it uh, it aims to the different you know it aims differently because it has many other features that you can use. For instance, when you use Redis, if you're familiar with it, it's a like a really pure key value store. No querying, no. Uh, I don't think so. I, I think I think there is no querying. I, I've met Redis like slightly, but uh, I think uh, it, there is no querying. So, but it's it's used for this type of like pure key value purposes. But InfiniSpan can can aim to other ones. So there are like different aims, I would say. It's also Java-based, which also can be um, a benefit from other stores. Somebody you, like prefers Java-based, or so. Yeah, I. There are also some com performance comparisons, but uh, like always, as, as always, uh, different products are better in some areas. So I cannot really say that Infinisman is the best. I cannot say it because it can't be. And uh, yeah, so there are lots of lots of features. I would say that this is the biggest advantage on it, of InfiniSpan. You can also configure it as an offline store that uh, you can evict the entries to the hard drive. You can query them, failover handling. There's a lot of features that other projects maybe don't don't have.
in Finispan, which uh, uh, is directly in Wi-Fi, so it's bottle tested and proven to be uh, rock solid. But there are, of course, m much other uh, deployments in various products and some open source uh, frameworks like Apache Marmota are built on top of that. Or, for example, if we visit yesterday presentation about Keycloak, it uh, behind the scenes, again, used in Finispan for clustering applications. So there, there is quite a lot of projects which use Infinispan under the hood. And, of course, there are custom projects uh, Used in Finispan, so but we don't don't know about it. It's open source, so everybody can download it. So we don't have probably any list of users. I can also say one particular example that I'm familiar with. That uh, at my university, at Masaryk University, they use it uh, in uh, one really interesting project that I running a similarity search uh, application. You know, the similarity search is basically where you have a, you have an application and you upload, let's say, uh, uh, an image into the application, and you say, "Give me ten most visually similar images," and then do a retrieve you. And they are uh, since since they have um, since uh, since they have a large amount of data, like hundreds of gigabytes. So they used Infinispan as a background store because of the of its distribution distributed execution framework that you can uh, it's basically is something very similar to distributed streams that you can execute some particular task on particular nodes on the keys. So and and the and the leader of that project said that this is the feature that he didn't found any on any other NoSQL NoSQL data store that you can. Uh, you can basically perform the operation only on the keys that you want to. That you can select the keys and you can uh, execute the task on the keys. Not all the keys, like MapReduce. It's different. So this is just one special case to maybe advance your question. One more addition to this. I realized one uh, another famous project which used Infinispan, it's Hibernate. You probably know Hibernate. So it's, again, used Infinispan as second-level cache. So it's another famous project which used Infinispan. Yeah. So are there any other questions? I didn't, I didn't forget about you, so I definitely want to answer your question, but I think I, I, I feel that I will need to think about it harder. So. <laughs> Or uh, contributions are welcome, there's no. <laughs> Do you use distribute? Uh, do you use Zookeeper for the distributed mode? To, what, what was it? I didn't. Uh, Zookeeper, the uh, consistent uh, distributed uh, map. You have a you have a, a a cluster of nodes, and they all have to be consistent, and you have oh. to know when they go down. Mm -hmm. How do you? How is this managed behind? Is this something in house or is it zookeeper behind it or console or I don't I heard yesterday about ATCD or to be honest I would have to check with the Yeah. 
Yeah. Because I'm not familiar with the zookeeper thing, so I didn't know what you're talking about. So I guess that I'm out of time. We're out of time. Uh, so thank you, Eri.